welcome to this video. I'm Samia, your host, and today I wanted to talk to you about Inktober, especially if you're a beginner. I've done Inktober for two years now, and this will be my third year, and I'm really, really excited to start Inktober because fall and ink and bold lines, just it's so fun. Anyway, I've seen a lot of people talk about doing Inktober for the first time on different YouTube comment sections and things like that, and it occurred to me that when you haven't done Inktober before, which was me only two years ago, um, it can be a little overwhelming. You're not really sure what to do, you get that you're supposed to draw every day, but it's ink and it, ink can be scary for some people, especially if they're not familiar with it. So today I wanted to show you a couple of sketchbooks I'm going to use, some of the materials that are my favorites, some cheap alternatives to a couple of those materials because I've sort of leveled up my art supplies over the years, but I have kind of a mix of like inexpensive and slightly expensive materials. Um, and I'm going to show you what I use for my inking in my comics because you might use it for your daily inktobers, as will I. The brushes, the inks I use, and the tray. The main thing about inktober, let's talk about that for a sec, is you're drawing with ink every single day. Now, it doesn't mean that it has to be the most complicated piece ever. You should be aiming for a level of finish, meaning not just a pencil sketch, but you can do a pencil sketch first but then draw over it with ink, or you can draw straight with ink, and whatever happens, happens. The point is doing it every day for 31 days. That is the challenge. You're learning about your mediums, you're learning about how you work as an artist, and you're finding time in your day to draw every single day. Jake Parker started it pretty much as a way to get people reacquainted with ink, but also reacquainted with the daily habit of drawing, and that's what I found most um, encouraging, most helpful about doing Inktober was that all of a sudden I found time in my day every single day of the week that I didn't think was there before. And I started it when I was still a full-time student, had two jobs, and still maintained some kind of social life. So the fact that I could find time in there to do Inktober means that anyone can find time to do Inktober. Um, it's just a matter of wanting to do it. So, without further ado, let's get into the sketchbooks I'll be using and why I love them. While I was doing Inktober the last couple of years, I sort of mixed it up with the paper I was using because I use different paper for different needs, but I'm going to show you guys what some of my favorite paper has been. Uh, for starters, I've been using this XL Canson Multimedia Sketchbook. This is the 9x12 size. Um, this is a really good size just for carrying around if you can afford to carry around a sketchbook this big. It's really nice paper because it's mixed media. It's a little bit thicker than sketch paper. It can take some wet media pretty well without buckling. It can take Cop Copics really beautifully, alcohol-based markers. Um, alcohol-based markers will bleed through pretty much everything except for marker paper, but they show up really nice on this. So if you don't mind bleed through, it's great. And I have one piece from a previous Inktober here, Purple Haze. This is all ink. This is purple ink, and this is black ink. I'll show you the exact inks I used for this particular piece. Um, and as you can see, it didn't really like bleed through very much. I think I made the collar in Copic marker. I think that's why you can see a little bit there. But the paper didn't buckle or anything. I got to do some splatter effects. It was really nice. So I really like this paper but the size is so big. So this year, I decided to size down with this nice, clean, slightly smaller sketchbook. This is seven by 10 inches. This is also a sketchbook I might be using for some comic pages for when I want to scan them in because my scanner is very small and can't really take anything larger than this. But I really just like this size. It also has perforated edges. I don't think you can see that. But if you want to tear out a picture that you think is really nice and put it in a portfolio or something, or tear it out to scan it in easier, you can do that with this as well as with the larger one. Next, I'll be trying to finish two sketchbooks because they're not finished yet, but I'm really proud of one of them. So this sketchbook is, it's a Moleskin. It's the Molson, Moleskin watercolor sketchbook. Uh, you can see that's landscape right there. I've done a lot of like sketches in here and doesn't matter. But I really like how thick the watercolor paper is in here. I will be using watercolors as well as inks myself for this Inktober. And the paper is really stiff. You can do pieces on both sides. 
This page is almost, this paper is almost done. The sketchbook is almost done. So I thought it would be nice to just kind of like finish it off with a couple Inktober pieces this year if I don't do everything in the uh, Canson. As you can see, this is ink and watercolor and it does not bleed through the back. It does not buckle. It's really, really beautiful. I'll also be trying to add a few more sketches into this moleskin sketchbook. It's the regular art plus sketch. It's whatever the heavyweight art paper is, but it's not watercolor paper, but it says art plus and it's plain. Um, I don't love this paper. I used to love moleskin paper a lot more. I think they changed it in their line to me. But, <laughs> but it's still really good for like sketches and stuff like that. Um, I've done some nice inked pieces in here. I'm going to show you the materials I used for that. Uh, the ink moves really nicely on it and it's good for just kind of sketching so I'm trying to finish this girl gang piece in particular. Um, and I just thought it would be good for those days where I I don't really want to do a finished piece but I still want to do so, my daily inktober. So for the bottle inks that I use, I have a couple cheap ones and expensive ones. So the cheap ones I used last year on that purple haze piece are these Higgins inks. I can feel my professor just hating me right now for even recommending this. But they are really inexpensive. If you've never done ink before, I wouldn't entirely recommend getting these over the Bombay inks I'm about to show you. But if, you know, if price and budget is really a big thing for you, they're a little bit cheaper. Um, they are good if you're going to water them down anyway. They're just very loose. They don't move as nicely as slightly thicker inks. They're very watery. But they are good for experimentation. So I have these in a bunch of different colors because one year I was doing a mixed media series and I just wanted really splashy pigmented backgrounds. So I used these in like pink and yellow, but here's purple and here's black. And they're fine. They kind of act like watercolor. They stick, they stain the paper more. Ink stain paper more than watercolor does. Watercolor stays movable because it's water. It's water soluble. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so that's kind of like the basic difference between them if you're thinking about using both, so something to keep in mind. The inks, uh, the inks I use these days for my comics and just for like big pieces are these Bombay inks. This is, um, well, this is a Bombay ink. They're both Dr. Phil Martin inks, there we go. This is the Bombay Black India ink and I've used it for a bunch of comic pages and once it's down, it stays. The only downside I've found with this is you can use watercolor with it, but I noticed that when I tried to use alcohol-based markers with it, the alcohol spreads them. So figure out if you're doing some mixed media stuff, if you're going to put some color into your ink over pieces, just keep that in mind. Ink with watercolor, this one is fine. Uh, ink with Copic markers, not fine, but I'm going to show you some fine liners that I use with Copic markers. And then this white ink is called um, Pen White, Dr. Phil Martin's Pen White. Um, it's for technical pens or just as a dip. I've used it as, as a dip. It's pretty opaque. It's good for finishing work with like highlights that you want to put in at the last minute if you don't want to just use a pen because you can use it with brushes. Um, the only issue I've ever had with this, once you put this down, do not put black over it. I swear to God, do not do it to yourself. I did it and what happens is that the black sits on top of this because this reacts to the paper differently and then it just kind of explodes like it bubbles off off of the surface and then you're left with this weird gray mark and you can kind of fix it with this but like it it's it's upsetting don't do it just don't do it and uh, finally to use these to make um, washes and stuff I had this really cheap tray it was like two dollars at like Blick or something by the way I get all my materials at Dick Blick, some indie art stores, Utrecht, um, you can find a lot of this stuff online. I'll link some of my favorite stuff, but if you go to a Blick, you're pretty much going to find everything I use. I would suggest going online for stuff, or going to an art store, not really going to Michael's. They don't have the greatest supplies, and when they do have the good supplies, there are never good prices. Like, unless you have a coupon or something, but just a tip there about shopping. Uh, so I use this tray, and what I do is I put the plain black ink here, and then if I'm making a wash, I'll put a few 
dots of black ink with some water and then I'll gray it down and I'll put like purple somewhere over here and I'll put some pink over here. I use this for gouache sometimes too if I can't find my gouache watercolor palette, but yeah, it's a good cheap option. I'd like to get the ceramic glass flower shaped one at some point because that feels like it would be nicer, but this has been doing me fine, so yeah. Now I'm gonna show you some loose pieces I did. I like working on different papers as I mentioned before. And I'm gonna show you some ways that you can interpret Inktober for yourself. So this was one of the first pieces I did. I think the prompt was speed. I was following the Inktober prompt list, which I will also link below. Um, I used technical pens and ink brush for this. You can use a mix of things. I used markers, black markers and a Copic colored marker with this. I really liked how it came out. I liked the contrast. I used a gray pen and black ink for this, and I just found this picture on Instagram. And the thing about Inktober is you can find your inspiration wherever you want. You can follow the official prompt list that Jake Parker makes every, every year. You can follow other prompt lists that kind of like resurface. Last year there was this really cool witches one, and I'm wondering if there'll be another witches one this year. That's kind of exciting. Um, or you can write down your own ideas for things that you want to do. Um, I'm pretty sure the prompt for this was like food or hunger or something, so I just drew a girl who was hungry. And then I did these really nice, as studies, these um, fine line. I just said really nice about my own art, I'm sorry, I just, I like them. I did these uh, line art based figure drawing studies from pictures of myself and then pictures from the internet. And I did a couple more of these, and it was a really good I, it was a really good way to get into figure drawing, but stay in the Inktober grind. So you can mix it up, you know. You can do decide what you want to do for you, so that you're not sitting at your desk every day like, what do I do now? Have some lists of ideas and stuff to pull from, but make it your own. Totally take the time to set yourself up the way you want to, get the materials that make you happy, and really go for it. So I really wanted to swatch a lot of the pens I'm going to use for Inktober and have a little guide for myself. And I'll tell you about some of these materials. Um, the Copic Multiliners, the fine liners, are my favorites. I've been using the black ones and the sepia toned ones and they come in a variety of line widths. So they're really, really nice for line work. I prefer them over the Prismacolor and the Micron pens. I used to use the Prismacolor Multiliners a lot and they're really fine, but they're only slightly cheaper than Copic Mark or Copic Fine Liners, so there's not much of a price difference. The Microns are a good bit cheaper, and a lot of people start out using Microns. I don't love them. The ink is pretty bad quality. It kind of degrades a lot quicker than other fine liners, and it looks really gray sometimes. I've had a lot of the nibs break on me, but if you want to just try liners for the first time, they're not a bad way to start at all. Um, the brushes aren't great. I wouldn't recommend them. They have kind of a weird tip that gets like fuzzy really quickly. You don't get very clean strokes from it. I really like these High Tech C.25 pens. I got one of them online and one of them from uh, a Japanese bookstore called Kinokunya. They're gel pens, so they are water activated. If you put them down and then do watercolor and ink wash, it will bleed a little bit but you can also put it over watercolor, which is what I've been doing, especially with the purple one. And they're just really nice. They're really nice colors. The nib is really good and really thin, so you can make some nice like hairline textures with it. The Pentel ink brush is tons of fun. Um, so the ink, once it's down, water doesn't move it, as far as I can tell. I've tried. It stains the paper really quickly, so if you let it dry completely, you shouldn't have too much of an issue. Um, Copic markers might make it bleed a little bit though, so be careful there. But a lot of people use this when they don't want to use a dip pen in an inkwell, and you can get really, really fine lines with it if you practice with it. It's a lot of fun. The Pentel Aquash ink brush is something that I tried out after seeing Tori Ann, whose channel is Juicy Ink, I'll link it below. And it's really nice, it's a light black, so you get this really smooth um, gray wash color when you use it and you can layer over it and get kind of deeper blacks as you go and it has a really nice point so again you can get some really nice marks with it um so this is a really fun one and then we have the pilot pocket brush pen i have this in soft and hard i really like both of these pens i haven't tested them 
as liners, but I have been putting them over watercolor and markers, and they just, they give you really nice kind of squiggly marks. That's why I swatched, I swatched them with some like quick straight uh, strokes and then some squiggly strokes. I also have the Tombow Fudenosuke brush pen, and I've started to see more people use this. And this is a really nice brush pen because even though it's, I have the one that's supposedly soft, I feel like I can get finer marks with it with a little bit more control than the Pilot Pocket brush pen. I like both of them. Um, my only issue right now with the Fudenosuke, and it could just be that it's running out really quickly, um, but I can get very long strokes with it. I start to get a dry brush effect after a while, which is fine, but not always what I'm going for. And then finally, I wanted to show you guys um, how the black and the colorless blender in the Copic set look, as well as some of the grays. I do want to do more gray tone and like limited palette colors in Inktober, and then just some like pure black and white ones. I don't want to rely too heavily on color. So I will be using these, which is why I included them on this little swatch sheet. And finally, the question on everyone's mind is how do I get those nice shiny white highlights when I don't have the white of the paper to work with? And so I'm showing you guys my white jelly roll pen, my Uniball Signo pen, and two of my white pencils. One is a chalk pencil, it's General's chalk pencil, and it's really, really inexpensive and pretty effective. And the other one is a soft core Prismacolor white pencil. And these are good if you want to get kind of lighter, more textured whites over your piece, but I tend to just do all my highlighting in the Signo, and then when I want slightly thinner lines, I use the Jelly Roll. So there you have it. That's all the materials I'll be using. I'm really, really excited for Inktober. I'm hoping I can really stick to it this year, despite how much I have going on. Because the point is drawing every day and finding time to do it. So please, Stay tuned for more videos. You can follow me on Instagram. I'll be putting more of my posts there. I'll be posting every single day as much as possible. So yeah, whether you're a spectator or taking part in Inktober, I'm cheering you on. I'm wishing you a happy fall. And let's keep at it together, all right? Have a good day, you guys. Bye.